Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Tokenizer posting this, BIS considers shutting down Embridge? Hmm? The BIS is considering to close down one of their longest running CBDC projects in Embridge. This could cause a ripple effect. Embridge is the only CBDC in MVP stage, but this closure isn't for the reasons you think. It's not because of lack of demand for CBDCs or lack of framework for CBDCs or pushback on integrating CBDCs, but rather it's literally because the cross-border capabilities and solutions could seemingly disrupt geopolitical issues. So, they're doing it for the politics. BIS GM Augustin Karstens directly said that due to their ties with BRICS in Embridge, they couldn't support nations subject to sanctions. So guys, it's about the sanctions. More reasons why, uh, more an another reason, I guess I should say, why the BRICS nations are uh, kind of fed up with the West and uh, you know using the US dollar as that reserve currency, why they're doing their own thing. I don't know why they don't just uh, kind of break off completely, start using the XRP ledger or something that is interoperable around the world so that they can do their thing on their own. And then when, uh, you know, Western nations do want to facilitate trade with them, at least they'll already be interoperable with RippleNet technologies. I mean, there's already murmurings that they could in fact already be doing this. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the countries that are uh, already participating in BRICS do already have uh, notable connections to RippleNet. Uh, if you guys didn't catch the deep dive I did on the BRICS countries, I will link that video up here in the top right hand corner. But yeah, it is about the politics with both Iran and Russia currently in sanctions of their own. This poses various geopolitical issues. Uh, though the groundwork has already been laid the past few years, uh, we've been hearing more talks of BRICS in the cross-border payment space. Regardless of Embridge or not, though, I believe we're too soon to truly see a disruption in cross-border payments. So unfortunately, that is where we find ourselves. Here's a here's an article that was just uh, released the other day. The Bank for International Settlements is debating whether to shut down a pilot cross-border payments platform after Russian President Vladimir Putin identified the underlying technology as a tool to circumvent sanctions boy, Putin put his foot in his mouth, didn't he? Uh, and potentially undermine the dollar's dominance in the financial global system. The Embridge project, which promises to allow sending money around the world without relying on U.S. banks, was among uh, topics discussed by central banks and finance chiefs at last week's annual meetings uh, of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank in Washington, according to people informed about the talks. Augustin Karstens, uh, here's what he said directly. We cannot directly support any project for the BRICS because we cannot operate with countries that are subject to sanctions. I want to be very clear about that. The U.S. has been increasingly using the dollar's role uh, as a key conduit of financial transactions worldwide to implement international sanctions, in particular after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, this has prompted attempts to seek alternatives that would be safe from U.S. interventions, even though the dollar remains the main currency of international trade, and there are little signs that this will change any time soon. So this could uh, add to the shakeup. Uh, the platform initially was developed by central banks of China, Thailand, Hong Kong, and the United Arab Emirates under the BIS's Innovation Hub, and recently reached the minimum viable product stage, meaning it's ready for testing in the real world. The UAE central bank said uh, a first cross-border payment uh, uh, sorry, said a first cross-border payment of digital dirham worth 50 million dirham, which is about $13.6 million, was sent to China through Embridge in January. In June, the BIS invited private lenders and other monetary institutions to join and perform actual transactions. So interesting to see that, uh, you know, there's been success on Embridge. It's not because it's not successful and the, the, the technology isn't sound. It's all because of political reasons. Things that make you go, hmm, I mean, it is no wonder Jim Rickards is again warning us on the bricks and gold back payment system. This one courtesy of M.A. Lee. Listen to this. Their big announcement, people were, have been waiting for the new BRICS currency. They did not announce that. That may, be, that may be years away, but they did something equally important. They created a BRICS payment system, clearance and settlement of securities transactions, and a digital ledger of you know, what one country owes to the other, et cetera. So it's a payment, balance of payment recording system. Uh, again, all uh, using blockchain technology, which has been around a long time. Um, the, the importance of that is now they're completely out outside the dollar system. It doesn't mean they'll never do another dollar transaction, but recall they've been, uh, Russia at least, and some of the other countries have been kicked out of the dollar system. So if you kick somebody out of the club, they're going to start their own club and that's exactly what they've done. Um, now this uh, is mostly trade oriented. I don't want to suggest it's the end of the dollar, but it's the be it's kind of the beginning of the end. You know, sterling in 1913 was the global reserve currency and by 1944, it was a footnote. Well, that, that took 30 years. These things play out over time. This, this could move uh, very, very quickly. But uh, one uh, really important element. So 
let's say Russia ships something to ships energy to China and China pays them in Chinese yuan. Uh, and then China ships um, manufactured goods to Brazil and Brazil pays them in their local currency. And you're keeping all this on a ledger. The central banks in each country can pay the, can pay the sellers and the buyers, uh, but the countries that have a ledger where they owe each other a certain amount. Well, you have two problems there. One is you might have too much of the currency that more than you can really spend. If you, if you have a big yuan balance, but you don't need that much from China, what are you gonna do with the excess? The other thing is you have exchange risk. If Russia has a big yuan balance from China and the Chinese yuan devalues, Russia could lose money on that. So how do you solve that? The answer, which is you know 5,000 years old, is gold. In other words, if you have too much of the other guy's currency, you can just buy some gold, sell for dollars and, and buy gold. Um, or just buy gold directly. I should also mention they set up a new commodities exchange that that includes gold. So you can buy gold in local currency and then just have the gold. Uh, and that obviously solves your foreign exchange problem. So this is, uh, apart from uh, pointing to the end of the dollar, at least in uh, trade as a trade currency, it's extremely bullish for gold. So gold, guys, gold is another key factor in this. If I uh, bring up the gold price, uh, you guys probably have seen over the last uh, few weeks, it has been surging as well. Uh, just the other day, I was talking about gold on the channel when it was trading at 27.50 per ounce. And uh, now as of the time of this recording, we're at about 27.80. So it has increased a little bit. So gold, bullish, obviously that intermediary that uh, you know BRICS nations can turn to when they don't want to be holding large quantities of each other's uh, fiat currency. But I mean, at the end of the day, really, if you're using RippleNet technology, you can use XRP to transfer and circumvent uh, any kind of problems you may have, especially when uh, Western nations are saying, we don't want to do business with you because of political reasons. I'm sure Putin and the gang have uh, some more plans up their sleeve. Anyway, I wanted to thank Token Icer there. And of course, M.A. Lee just for posting those. Now, Mr. Big Time Guys did post this. Visa and ClearBank form a real-time payments partnership. Now, Visa, we know, connected to Ripple through Earthport. And uh, I had to do a little bit of digging. I, I, I forgot that ClearBank is uh, also partnered with Temenos, guys. They partnered back in March of 2020. Temenos and ClearBank form a strategic relationship to provide seamless payments in the cloud. So there's a Ripple connection there. Now, these two Ripple connected partners working together for another endeavor here, Visa is teaming up with ClearBank on a partnership centered around issuance of money movement solutions. By utilizing ClearBank's cloud native banking infrastructure, Visa could soon benefit from its real time payment processing, enhanced transaction visibility, and a streamlined reconciliation process when processing transactions in the UK and Europe. The partnership also includes pay, uh, plans for Visa Direct, Visa's money movement solution, with ClearBank looking to issue. Visa cards to customers in the UK. Uh, here's another quote. ClearBank has seen strong growth in the UK, and we are thrilled about the prospect of collaborating with them across multiple areas, including issuing Visa cards and enabling real-time international money movement. This coming from Mandy Lamb, Visa's managing director for the UK and Ireland. This is a great example of how we can work with partners to deliver the tools and services they need to help them expand their business. The collaboration comes nearly three months after ClearBank announced its expansion uh, from the UK to Europe after receiving a banking license license in the Netherlands. So guys, they've expanded. And I think they're making it abundantly clear that they want to continue to expand into new regions, I guess, uh, you know, starting with um, Europe first. They're also seeing broader shifts in financial trends, like uh, down here it says, according to a report that they did conduct, 61% of millennials expressed high interest in real-time payments, uh, indicative of a broader shift towards instant transactions. Uh, organizations implementing these systems reported substantial benefits with 77% noting an improved customer experience. Uh, consider 54% found that real-time transactions alleviate issues surrounding urgent payments. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why these numbers aren't 100%. Why would anybody want a slow payment versus a fast payment? I guess for some people, it doesn't really matter uh, because they're not making um, any kind of, uh, you know, quick payment immediately. So, you know, maybe they're just not thinking about it. Maybe, you know, oh, my bills come out of my bank account every two weeks or month or whatever it is. So they're not thinking about it in terms of, uh, okay, I need to move money. I need to move a lot of money and I need to move it fast. Well, real time, fast cross-border payment leveraging XRP. That is the solution for me. Anyway, wanted to keep moving along, guys. Uh, I saw this too from Mr. Man. Another one, great news from Ripple partner Standard Bank and Valente. They've both teamed up to transform African payments. So another case where these are two Ripple partners, Valente Technologies, global payments as a service provider, today announced a strategic partnership with Standard Bank, Africa's largest bank by assets, to modernize payment infrastructure across the continent. So as you guys know, Valente uh, does run on Volpay, which is Ripple enabled. This is, by the way, the same technology 
technology that runs Fedwire, which is the uh, the major uh, domestic instant payment platform in the United States. According to Valente, this is one of the most ambitious PAAS systems, uh, system deals ever negotiated with no other payment provider servicing as many countries for a single customer in this, uh, in this situation. It is a landmark alliance, which is now operational in South Africa. So guys, here's uh, one of those BRICS countries looking to uh, make the switch, and it makes the use of Valente's PAAS and embedded pro uh, pre-processing, uh, which works with existing infrastructure to centralize multiple payment formats and standardize into a consolidated system. Valente said this enables the banks to take a deep step forward uh, to achieve its broader long-term transformation strategy. You can see down here too, uh, they're looking to accelerate uh, Standard Bank's transition to ISO 20022, which uh, of course is uh, going to be necessary in the future. They talk a little bit about Valente and uh, Standard Bank in these two quotes. Guys, I will link this in the description of the video if you're interested, uh, but I just wanted to point out another two now, two Ripple partners. It's interesting because, you know, in the past we used to say, oh, this Ripple partner is teaming up with this company uh, that isn't affiliated with Ripple in any way, but now we're starting to see, you know, more and more. 2024 has been, uh, it feels like it's been the year of Ripple partners working with other Ripple connected companies or other partners or, you know, something similar to, uh, you know, just kind of bolster the real world utility of XR. XRP through the XRP ledger through, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, different applications, whether it's cross-border payments or tokenizing this or derivatives or wh whatever it is. It seems like that has been the theme of 2024. Anyway, I uh, wanted to thank Mr. Man for that, uh, but I got another one too, guys. In China, Lian Lian Global unveils new payment platform partners with Cyberport at Hong Kong Fintech Week. So as you know, Lian Lian is another Ripple partner, guys. They brought together key stakeholders from across the banking, securities, investment, insurance, and technology sectors to discuss the future intersections of finance and technology. Lian Lian Global, a subsidiary of Hong Kong listed Lian Lian Digitech, participated in the event as a gold sponsor. And as a representative of the digital technology industry, uh, the company showcased its pioneering solutions and innovative uh, offerings in the global financial, uh, sorry, global payment sector to an international audience. This is a new product from Lian Lian. It's called Lian Lian Global Account Services or LGAS. So they enable merchants to receive sales payments in multiple currencies directly into their local accounts, eliminating the need for numerous international bank accounts. Of course, that sounds like DLT technology to me. This guarantees the rapid, secure and cost effective fund transfers uh, significantly reducing operational expenses and enhancing international competitiveness. In recent years, global trade has experienced a resurgence driven by the expansion of key economies such as China. And, uh, you know, considering we're talking about the East, considering we're talking about ripple related companies in the Eastern part of the world, it would only make sense to see that, uh, you know, these guys are seeing more traction. The uh, World Trade Organization's Global Trade Outlook and Statistics Report uh, anticipates a 7.4% growth in Asian exports for 2024, outpacing other regions. So uh, we're still seeing growth, uh, you know, despite the fact that we've been hearing uh, coming out of uh, China that their economy is really slowing down. Technically, it is still growing. Um, and this is uh, taking into account all Asian countries, so not just China alone. But all Asian countries apparently are growing 7.4% uh, or did grow 7.4% so far in 2024. So great news here from Ripple partner Lian Lian. Sticking with Asia, guys, apparently the Monetary Authority of Singapore, which uh, we know does have a very close relationship to Ripple, said this, Ripple is the leading provider of digital asset infrastructure for financial institutions with a proven track record working with regulators and policymakers around the world. So this one, courtesy of Smoke here, you can see it from uh, directly from a Monetary Authority of Singapore uh, document here, Annex B, about SFF FinTech Excellence Awards in 2024. And they said that Ripple is a leading provider of digital asset infrastructure for financial institutions. Guys, you know what they also said? They also mentioned this with regards to policy. OK, so they've got a proven track record working with regulators and policymakers around the world. Ripple's payments, custody and stablecoin solutions are pioneering the digital asset economy. Well, their stablecoin isn't even out yet, yet they are commenting on their stablecoin pioneering the digital economy, building credibility and trust in enterprise blockchain. Now, it is also interesting to note here, uh, another great uh, tweet here from Smoke. Yes, Ripple stands to benefit greatly from additional regulation. So they're also stating this in, a, uh, in an official report, and I'm assuming they mean in the United States. Since regulation would draw more investors uh, and bring order, it is believed that it will strengthen the entire cryptocurrency market. However, Ripple stands to benefit greatly from additional regulation. So guys, the Monetary Authority of Singapore saying it flat out. We need regulation uh, and likely because, you know, the rest of the world already kind of has regulation more or less, or at least is about 85, 90% there. 
guys, it sounds as though they're talking about the US. We need the regulation in the United States in order for this to really get up off the ground and start ripping and roaring. So anyway, that is uh, news from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Wanted to thank Smoke for posting that. And guys, just take a look at what Ripple is doing in terms of uh, their custody business. Bill Morgan pointing this out. The value of crypto in Ripple custody is in excess of $652 million involving 36 assets. So only 3% of this value is not in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and USDC and USDT. Uh, the other 32 assets equal about 33% uh, or just over 19 million. But 97%, guys, is in the top cryptos right now. BTC, Ethereum, uh, obviously stable coins as well, like USDT and USDC. So, um, you know, Ripple also kind of taking it upon themselves to start, uh, you know, diversifying. You know, they've been doing this now for a few years, diversifying and getting into bigger projects. You know, um, like David Schwartz did say, if you guys didn't catch the video I did this morning, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. It was an older clip from a few months ago. He did say, you know, it's not going to be the banks that get us, uh, you know, the, the, it, they're sexy relationships, but they're not going to really get us to where we need to be. It's going to be many other things. And I think Ripple did uh, identify that. I think, uh, you know, that's partially why uh, they're releasing the stablecoin, the RLUSD. And even if we take comments like this, guys, from CEO Larry Fink again, this is not a brand new breaking comment or anything, but I just want to remind you how BlackRock sees the tokenization landscape changing moving forward. Listen to this. We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QSIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. We could rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a tokenization. But the most importantly thing, we could customize strategies through tokenization. And so when I talk about, you know, these partnerships and how 2024 has been uh, kind of the year of Ripple partners partnering with other Ripple partners, making moves, guys, Visa, ClearBank, uh, you know, they've uh, connected through Temenos or whether it's uh, Standard Bank and Valente teaming up or many others. I mean, these are just two examples of uh, what I'm explaining here. It's going to be about the interoperation and eventually so much value is going to be delivered on the XRP ledger that we're not going to know what to do with it all. Well, I mean, it's going to be eating up all that XRP. The demand is going to be insane, so much so that I wanted to bring you this. Now, this was an older clip of Chris Larson talking about Codius. And since, you know, the Codius project has been uh, quietly being uh, revived, according to Stefan Thomas, I thought, I, I thought I'd bring this because I think uh, what Chris Larson says here is interesting. What we could eventually see is up to 1 billion transactions per day. Sure, yeah. No, we're really excited about Codius. And, uh, you know, that's Stefan Thomas and Evan Schwartz, uh, absolutely brilliant engineers who have been spearheading that, along with an increasing number of our, of our staff. Um, so a lot of it is obviously smart contracts. Smart contracts have traditionally been attached to distributed ledgers. Um, I think originally it was thought that you have distributed ledger first, and then you'd have smart contracts built on top of it. We've sort of taken a different approach with Codius uh, in making them two completely separate streams so that with Codius you can both use any programming language um, and you can use any form of ledger. So whether it be a distributed ledger, decentralized ledger, whether it be PayPal, a centralized ledger, Chase, whatever, um, we think um, those uh, smart contracts should be able to tie uh, anything of value from any counterparty or non-counterparty. So that's a, a kind of a fundamental foundation of it. But what that should do then is allow, to your point, um, the idea of autonomous agents. So a good example would be, you know, today the only kind of autonomous agent that can exist is basically uh, a virus, which is uh, usually having to do bad things to support itself. Um, originally, there was the idea behind viruses was that you have benevolent viruses. And we think with things like autonomous agents that can think, think of a program that can exist in the wild and kind of have a bank account. You know, again, uh, you know, an application cannot go to Chase and open a bank account, which means it can't support itself. Um, it can't take in payments from customers. It can't hire developers to improve itself. And something like Codius would allow that to happen. So you might have a world where you have benevolent uh, agents running around that could actually be antibodies for viruses. That would be one example, taking the place of antivirus um, companies. You could have uh, an autonomous agent that would be like an Uber, where you wouldn't need Uber. You'd have a direct uh, sort of connection between the customer and the driver. That driver actually could be eventually um, a self-driving car. 
Um, what gets really interesting there is um, you could directly eliminate profit margins because autonomous agents don't need to make profit. Um, so it can, these things will have a lot of, uh, in, you know, obviously this is in the future a bit, but you know, this is, this is real now. Um, uh, you can do this all uh, very today and you'll see a lot of new tools coming out. But that's the world where I think you could see a billion times a billion transactions a day. A billion times a billion transactions per day. Now, again, this was an older clip of Chris Larson discussing Codeus. But remember, guys, built-in payments, Codeus applications can pay each other using a currency, using Interledger. Think of that, a billion transactions a day. And again, not just banks, it'll be many applications running over the XRPL. And this is just through one hypothetical company, namely Codeus. And what Chris Larson is uh, discussing here, I think AI could take this to the next level too. So who knows what they're doing in the background if they are integrating some kind of artificial intelligence platform uh, on top of Codeus. Guys, the future is looking very, very interesting. I just can't wait till my XRP moons. And for more information on what I'm doing this bull run, you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is only $5 a month. I am going to be doing a live Q&A session this uh, Friday or Saturday. I'm not quite sure yet. So if you're not subscribed to the Patreon, I do suggest you go over there, patreon.com slash working money channel. Guys, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.